Welcome to Growing Bremerton Together. I'm Mayor Patty Lent, and I'm with Shaw Burnett today with BCAT. We're um, going to discuss the budget, the budget process, and where we're going. As your new mayor, we've got some new ideas and some tough problems to solve. Mm -hmm. Mayor, I understand um, when you came into office and as you got to look at these numbers, you really wanted to take a look at the four-year budget, not do some quick fixes to just carry us through 2010. So tell us, how did you get to these numbers? First of all, I have a tremendous staff. Our financial um, department has, Kathy's been with us 20 years, Caroline's been with us six years, and they not only have been the analysts for us in creating our budgets, but seeing that they've balanced. What we've done, though, and not just the last few years, but for actually decades, is we have been able to use different funds from different areas of our income revenue in order for us to balance. Looking at one year at a time budget, it's easy to get a balanced budget, move forward, and find that you're going to have a bigger problem or even less revenues for the next year. Having said that, I know that in my four-year term, I plan on looking out and we have developed a four-year projection. We'll be able to take and look four years out to see where the revenues are going, projecting how we can increase those revenues, and then how we can cut back on our expenditures. Mm -hmm. So this one-time fix that we've been doing is no longer going to be um, sustainable, nor will our revenue support the size of our city government or the services that we're currently providing. Mm -hmm. And that's not unique to Bremerton. We are not alone in this. Um, I had a discussion with a friend of mine. Those of us that work for the city, love working for the city, we've worked for the city for 20, 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Those that work in the shipyard work there 10, 15, 20, 25, 35 years. The county, the same thing. Mm -hmm. That is a huge expense for our city. Our um, personnel costs, we have fabulous benefits. Those are, that's, that is the biggest chunk. And Shara, I'll explain to you what we've done is we've gone back to the 2005 budget. That was before the big balloon when all of our property, our real estate excise tax, increased to the point where we thought we were going to be fat um, city, fat city <laughs> um, well and have lots of money mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. sustain us forever. Well, going back to 2005, looking at the number of employees, looking at where our benefits were since that time, um, all of the benefits that are part of our bargaining units and part of what we provide for each city employee has increased 13 percent annually. Mm -hmm. That's an average. One year we actually had a 25 percent increase. Wow. So when you average that out over the last five years, that is unsustainable. With the revenues, they are not increasing to that. In fact, mm -hmm. with a, a negative revenue for last year, um, it just doesn't match. So right. again, as we are right-sizing city government, we're taking a look at every single department, including the city council, our police and fire, community development, parks, everyone is going to feel this pinch. In 2009, there was across the board 4% cut. I took a hard look at the areas that we had already cut and where we needed to look at additional reductions. And I'm just not straight across the board. I know there are certain areas of our budget we have to protect. The first is our citizens want to know that they are safe, that we provide health and welfare for their being. And that tax dollar would be for our firemen, our police, um, for the quality of water that we have, and it's the most pristine in the state. Also, that any septics or sewers are going to be safely um, controlled and not have any backups or areas w of concern. Mm -hmm. So we have to watch that those areas don't get cut to the point that they, they can't provide mm -hmm. the needed service. But with that said, we started furloughs in 2009. We're asking additional furloughs. In fact, what I've asked voluntarily of all of our employees, the represented by the union and the not rep represented, is to take eight furlough days or the equivalent that will get us through 2010. My preference is if there's some way we could sustain that through 2011. Mm -hmm. 
then we would be able to really see how the income and revenues, how the building and businesses we're trying to build are going to generate more money. So with that said, it was really difficult mm -hmm. to select a percentage to go through. Mm -hmm. um, I spent hours and hours with our finance people. And just to give you an idea, we kept police and fire at the lowest percentage. It is just a touch over 4%. We went from and there. And that's a cut number, correct? Cut, this is to cut by that cut percent, percent of their current balance, uh, of their current budget. Um, one of our areas went up 17 percent, or to cut by 17 percent, some six, mm -hmm. eight, nine. Um, so mm -hmm. they're looking really um, diligently to find out where we can not just cut it one time, but sustain it for the mm -hmm. services provided to the citizens. Um, let's make sure everybody knows that there was a study session held with mayor and council finance department heads. Everybody got to the table and this is what council directed you to do. This is what the people want, um, safety, health, and that is what the mayor is working on then mm -hmm. with the department heads. So that is the direction from council. So now everybody does their work, brings it back to the mayor. And Mayor, when do you think you are going to be ready to go back to Council and say, this is what we are recommending? We're trying to get everything put together. Now, I'll be working with all of our bargaining units right. um, individually, sometimes up to four hours, just so that we can take and finalize um, going to the table and talking about the issues at hand. We do not want to open up our current contract. We have a th three-year existing contract with our Teamsters, our police, and our fire. If we can get a memorandum of agreement on some of the voluntary concessions that I'm asking, I really feel that we can again get through 2010 and try to use that in 2011. Without the bargaining and the conversation back and forth, um, we need to really talk about what they're doing. They're coming up with very creative ideas. I am exceedingly um, pessimistic, I mean optimistic for what they're going to come to the table with so that we can do the budget. And we're going, we're showing them 2012 and 13 as well, so we have a good picture when we start negotiating. Mm -hmm. To get back to your question, Char, I'm hoping by the end of June to have something to City Council that is agreeable to all of our bargaining units and agreeable to our employees that they will feel that it's going to be able to move forward. We can put 2010 away and start programming and developing our 2011 budget. Mm -hmm. I think um, you're, based on what I've just heard you say and the numbers that you know, I think there's really no way getting forward without actually uh, we will lose service in the city. Mm -hmm. Some services are going to go away mm -hmm. um, and we might be losing people as well. Mm -hmm. And, But that is not, again, it's not unique to Bremerton and it's a challenge that all small cities and large cities, everybody is really our, faced with. Our county with. and state also are under everything you read and hear in the mm -hmm. newspapers. It's, um, it's, a glo it's not just our state either, it's mm -hmm. across the nation. Mm -hmm. Every time there's a catastrophe, um, our attention goes to that area of the country, but here at home we do have to take and maintain. Someone keeps asking me about raising taxes, and as you know, it isn't a tax issue. It's an issue of right-sizing the city, doing, sharing the workload, and doing a little bit more with what we've got. So I've got a tremendous staff. Mm -hmm. The 348 current employees that we have um, are really all excited about seeing something happen and moving forward mm -hmm. with our city. Mm -hmm. And I think, speaking as a city employee, I think we are all anxious for the decision. And let's hear the decision and let's go. Let's move forward to, to, towards that goal. And I think we'll all be ready when it happens. And Char, I think you really resemble you're an example of all of our other employees. Mm -hmm. They have that same feeling. Let's move on. Let's get let's, it. Let's get it done. We're mm -hmm. willing to take and, and have that compromise. Good for you, Mayor. So um, I don't have any solid numbers, but as soon as we have those negotiations, um, we'll have some press releases going out. City Council, this is one time that City Council and your mayor are um, working together. 
they've got specific things they'd like to see happen, and um, I'm hoping that'll happen. So with that, Shar, mm -hmm. I think we're going to take a quick break. We've got um, some positive things coming to show you additional revenue to offset this budget process. Um, join me in a few moments. Welcome back. Some good news now after all those budget talks is I have Patty Graf Hoke, our newest director for the Kitsap Peninsula Visitor and Convention Bureau, and she has some good news for us. Well, the, the best news that I have, Mayor Lent, is the fact the sun is shining, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be 80 degrees this weekend. It would have been nice if that had shown up last weekend for Harbor Fest, but we'll take it this weekend. <laughs> So um, I am just delighted to be here. Thank you so much for asking me to join you. And what can I tell you today about the visitor? First of all, uh, as the new director, mm -hmm. you've got lots of changes that are taking place. Mm -hmm. um, a new branding, um, some new numbers mm -hmm. on our website. Mm -hmm. Just give us an update. Well, we launched our uh, branding campaign actually late last year. Uh, we came out for the very first time. The Kitsap Peninsula is on the map in the Washington State Travel Planner, which is an extremely popular uh, online and print publication produced by the Washington State Tourism uh, Office. And our viewers are going to be seeing that yes, right now. Yes, yeah, it's it's just a, it's fabulous. It's we get lots and lots of uh, referrals from that publication. So it was really important for us to be in that publication, uh, and and in a big way. And before we were under North Seattle. And so now we have a five-page section of our own. And it's not just Bremerton and Kitsap County. Well, it's the peninsula. That is correct. And I thank you for mentioning that. Uh, it's really important, just like Yakima Valley is the Yakima Valley, not Yakima County. It's Yakima Valley wine country. It's the Tri-Cities. Mm -hmm. uh, those regions have really branded themselves by coming together and uh, bringing all the communities together under a regional uh, marketing and branding strategy and that's what we're really wanting to do with us. We think we have as much to offer as those regions. We, we, they don't have Disneyland and they're not Las Vegas either. And our feeling is, is if they can brand themselves and make them themselves internationally known, we can too, especially with our shorelines and waterways and marinas and fountains. We have just as much to offer. So our branding strategy is to really help people recognize where the Kitsap Peninsula is. So the name of it is the Natural Site of Puget Sound. Mm -hmm. And we did that on purpose because Puget Sound is very recognizable and it also positions us very close to Seattle, mm -hmm. 13th largest metropolitan area in the United States. What? And it differentiates us really important from the Olympic Peninsula, which is the forests, the wetlands, the oceans. Mm -hmm. And that's not quite who we are. We have beautiful natural places, mm -hmm. but we're so accessible to the urban areas of Seattle, the east side, and so we really want to take advantage of that. And you have a new website. Well, we're launching a redesigned website mm -hmm. probably uh, in about five days that is just going to be spectacular. We're really excited about it. It, uh, it. it is going to be very effective in helping us to promote all of the different activities that were going on that are happening right now. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of things, features built into the new website, so we can put things up immediately and let people know when the wine festival's happening and the Blackberry Festival and that's great and runs and now all your kinds kickoff of was mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend, and you had a presentation for all of our community. It was the first annual. Um, Kickoff. Well, and it was our it was our a it was supposed to be a traditional um, annual meeting. We have we're required we're a nonprofit mm -hmm. have one every year, and typically those were held at lunch, one o'clock, with a PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. But we decided since we are in the tourism and entertainment business, which we are, 
we don't do root canals. We actually entertain <laughs> people. Um, we decided to have a party instead mm -hmm. and kick off the tourism season. And we really appreciate your being there. Well, you gave out seven beautiful awards mm -hmm. by a local artist. Yes. And as a recipient of one of them, um, the, it was the President's Award. It was the President's Circle, and you were our very first recipient, and we honored you with that because of your uh, willingness to uh, be a, such a strong advocate for our organization and also for tourism and for small businesses because tourism is really all about small businesses and we know what a strong supporter you are for that. And we wanted to honor that. Thank you, and I so appreciate it. That's mm -hmm. the highlight of my and office. And Lisa Sturette was our, as one of our board members and she donated all these one-of-a-kind original uh, designs, um, awards, and she was Beautiful. just, it, they were just lovely. We thank her very much for that. Patty, tell me what, what a tourist looks like today. You know, that's a good question. Thank you very much for asking that because it is a very com complicated, especially with our legislature and elected officials. Everybody thinks of a tourist as somebody with a Hawaiian shirt, you know, umbrellas in their drinks, leisure, <laughs> leisure yes. activities. These are people with lots of disposable income. And I think that perception is what uh, keeps us from really funding tourism programs the way we should. Mm -hmm. And we believe that uh, today's tourism is really more about um, anybody who doesn't live here. And that is if you're having a wedding and you've invited relatives from across the country mm -hmm. to come to your house for three days, now are those tourists or those guests to your wedding? And Both. our our feeling is anybody who doesn't live here is a, is a visitor. So right. we like to use the word visitor okay. versus tourist because mm -hmm. we also, uh, the VCB is really a proponent of uh, local tournaments. The Pumas are going to have their opening uh, uh, U.S. Open. They've made the championships. Mm -hmm. We're just really Second excited. Second year in a row. That's right. With And we're really excited about supporting them. And we have uh, information about where you can get tickets. And that's on the 15th of uh the next week on Tuesday, mm -hmm. June. But tournaments are very huge for, for Bremerton as well. I mean, mm -hmm. NCCA, uh, the NCAA, excuse me, golf tournament that uh, was just at Gold Mountain brought in hundreds and hundreds of people. And we concur with the uh, Sun, which said that Gold Mountain is a gold mine. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, are those, those are, those are, I think some people would say those are tourists, but the families that came with them. So those people are not just using hotels. They're using the restaurants, they're using the grocery stores, they're using the pharmacies, mm -hmm. they're going to the shopping malls, they're buying art in the local galleries. And in the absence of having our businesses and our mm -hmm. economy turn as fast as we want, right. this is the perfect way of yes. having some revenue come into our city for yes, sales tax. absolutely. Um, how are the hotels doing? Well, uh, surprisingly, uh, the smaller ones are struggling a little bit, mm -hmm. but I, again, I believe that that's because smaller hotels, like s any small business, really has to have a niche. Mm -hmm. It has to be specialized, unless there's just so much revenue, there's just lots to spread around but I think you have to be you know you know pretty clear about what your who your target group is the larger hotels like Clearwater Casino Fairfield mm -hmm. um, the Hampton I know all have are up their sales are up 20 to 30 percent I understand uh, and that is because the Fairfield obviously is taking um, uh, some of the long uh, extended stay folks that were staying at the Hampton, that's now being freed up so that the Kitsap Conference Center now can book two, three-day conferences where they couldn't before. So that's having a really positive impact, I think, on, on Bremerton and on the small businesses. Mm -hmm. That's one of the growth areas that I mm -hmm. think um, really emphasizes what growing Bremerton is doing. And, mm -hmm. and I, love, I love having that. I love our communities together. Mm -hmm. um, as far as our tours, are there ev events now that take us through July and September? Do you have a list of those? Actually, there are events that take us all year round mm -hmm. now. I mean, I think the idea 
of, uh, and especially for our, all of our communities are so unique. Bremerton is completely different than Paulsbo, right. is different than Kingston, is different than Hansville. And, there, and, and because we're the natural site of Puget Sound, we don't rely on sunshine all year <laughs> round. We are, a lot of the folks that come here are, whether they're boaters, people doing kayaking, biking, a lot of those are now year round activities. Mm -hmm. So, and then obviously gallery, uh, uh, you know, going to attending galleries, the theater, the Admiral Theater. I mean, so there's a lot of year-round activities, but our website, www.visitkitsap.com, and we work in conjunction with your website as well, Kelsey, mm -hmm. um, and posting events. And so if you go to the www.visitkitsap.com and there's a search for activities or search for uh, a calendar and you type in Bremerton, I, uh, just before I got here, there were seven pages in the, in the next week of just different activities that are happening mm -hmm. around the Bremerton and in the area and, and you've got wonderful little communities like Manette which you now have your very own um, uh, brewery right here in Manette, we or do. Blocken, mm -hmm. which is hugely successful. Mm -hmm. We featured it in one of our newsletters and it was the number one uh, thing that people hit on was Der Blocken. We were so surprised. Oh, that's great. It's good yeah. for our small businesses. Yes, absolutely. And as the bridge goes up, we're hoping mm -hmm. that um, they'll all wear hard hats because mm -hmm. Manette will feel like they're under construction. Yeah, when the well, I is live in built. Manette, so <laughs> my husband and I are, are, are looking forward to that. <laughs> have the people that have gone um, on the website increased? Oh, you know, our website numbers are just astounding. That's one reason I'm so excited about um, the Visitor and Convention Bureau because you know, the WW Visit Kits app is really a built-in franchise. I mean, people come to us, you know, we don't even have to do anything, mm -hmm. but we average uh, 50,000 visitors a month. Wow. And last, in April though, you know, it depends. We get online uh, emails as well, about 300 a month. Mm -hmm. But on online, it was, uh, I think in April, it was 40, 43, no, 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 excuse me, 54,000, and it went to 77,000 in May. That's tremendous. That, yeah, I mean, and, and, and I think that's indicative of the reality that more and more people are doing everything online. We, mm -hmm. Our website is iPhone friendly, iPad friendly. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, everybody's doing a lot of if that. If a online. bed and breakfast or someone that has a new little tour company or they wanted to feature something in a community, how would they get in touch with you or get on our website or display that information? Right, that's that's a good question too. You know, we uh, the website is because now it's, we're we're redoing it so that we're going to try and make that available so people can do it themselves. But mm -hmm. for right now, if they send an in, uh, info to info at visitkitsap.com, we can help them do that. We are, um, the board is uh, really adopting a policy that really small businesses, artists, we're really just basically comping them. We want them on the website okay. because that's what tourists are looking for. And mm -hmm. so we don't want to have any impediment for them not being available to our visitors. So people like the Puppet Museum, for instance, here, uh, Collective Visions with the cooperative artists. and. You know, the smaller businesses, those are so unique and so special to your community. Well, another exciting point is that you're doing all of this to um, outreach for people coming into town. Mm -hmm. And we're trying in the city, trying to do something so we have better signage mm -hmm. on the set. Right. Um, by the end of June, we're hoping that the city will buy into some new traffic patterns, mm -hmm. some new signage so they know mm -hmm. that when they come through that tunnel off of our ferries, mm -hmm. they'll come right back into the city. Our fish and fishermen will be up. Mm -hmm. We've got lots of things to brag about and lots mm -hmm. of things to display in our city and as part of the Kitsap Peninsula. Mm -hmm. So, Patty, you are tremendous. I Thank know that you. you're out there working all the time. You. You're working for all the jurisdictions, mm -hmm. for all the little places, and for the county. Um, it's a joy having you here. Do you have any last fun things well, that you want to share with the us? The only thing I would like to share is that we are going to be working with the Washington State Ferries. I have a meeting with them next week uh, to talk about increasing rider ridership and getting more people on the Bremerton boat to come over here. And so I'm excited about working with them as far as doing more marketing through the state to um, provide uh, marketing support for... I don't think we can live without you. <laughs> and, Thank um, you. 
this is the good side of the news. We're going to have some new visitors, um, some new revenue for us in the city, and some exciting things for all of you to watch for. I appreciate you joining me again in growing Bremerton together. Thank you.